Installing Proxmox in a ZFS RAID 1 mirror is one of the best ways to ensure system reliability. In this video, we're gonna see how to do that. What's up Geek Army, Anand here one more time. Today I am going to show you how I set up my Proxmox virtualization environment. As I have covered in my previous videos in my home lab tour, I use a top 10 V700 mini PC as my Proxmox system. It has two M.2 slots, which is what I'm gonna put in RAID 1 ZFS mirror today. It also has an additional SATA slot for an additional disk that I use for a bunch of different things, including caching, for, for example, R clone cache, which is something that I spoke about in my previous video on using R clone to mount SMB shares from Synology NAS onto my Proxmox LXC container. So this would be the extra third drive in my system. So today I'm going to virtualize this environment on my Proxmox and show you how I install Proxmox. In addition, stick around till the end because I will leave you with three things that you really need to do before you get started with doing anything on Proxmox. If you like the videos I have been putting out, make sure you hit the like button and also the notification bell so you know when the next video comes out. I would really appreciate it if you can subscribe to my channel as well. In addition to what I will be showing in this video, I strongly recommend enabling SSL certificates for your Proxmox web interface face. What I mean by this is a proper signed SSL certificate. And all you need is a domain name and Let's Encrypt can give you the SSL certificates. If you are interested in this topic and want to know how to do it, please follow and subscribe to my channel and I will make a video on it and you will be notified when the video comes out. Okay, let's get started with Proxmox 8 setup today. So here I am on Proxmox's website. You can see that there are installers or ISO files available for download. I already downloaded it. You obviously need a USB drive to write this ISO file to. How do you write the ISO file to a USB drive, which then you will use to boot your system? Here there is Etcher, Balinas Etcher. So you can download the Etcher application. You can also use other applications, but Etcher is something that many people have used. So download it, select the image as shown here, select the image, select the drive where you want to write the image to. Be very careful, pick the USB drive. If you pick a wrong drive, everything in it may get erased. So pick the right USB drive, flash it, and the USB drive is ready to go. Plug the USB drive into your Proxmox system, start the system and get into the BIOS or the boot manager and boot from the USB drive. Now today, I can't really take a video of doing all of this stuff, so I have virtualized the whole setup on my Proxmox here. You can see the machine number 500. You can see that I have already loaded the ISO file that we had just downloaded as a CD drive for this virtual machine. I have three different disks to simulate my environment. Two disks of the same size that we're gonna make a ZFS RAID 1 mirror and the 64 gigabyte disk that is going to mimic my 4 TB SSD that is SATA on my top 10 V700 mini PC. So let's begin the process. So we're gonna create a ZFS RAID 1 mirror of these two. Why ZFS RAID 1 mirror? This is a really good question. I haven't been using ZFS until now, but with my recent upgrade, I went with ZFS and I haven't looked back, mainly because and RAID 1 mirror has already bailed me out one time when one of the disks in the mirror degraded and I was able to recover very quickly. So if your mini PC supports two NVMe slots and M.2 slots, I would highly consider creating a ZFS RAID 1 mirror. Of course, you would need the amount of RAM that is needed to support this because ZFS does require some RAM or take away some RAM for its performance. So if you have enough space and RAM or disks, I would consider ZFS RAID 1 mirror. So let's start with this process right here. So if I go to console and start it, this is exactly how it's gonna look like or very close to what it's going to look like when you boot your system from the USB drive. So we're gonna do graphical environment. You can also do the terminal UI, which I have used in the past because I did have a situation where the graphical environment errored out, but the terminal UI worked 
for me anyway. So, but in this case, we're gonna go with the graphical UI. Let's wait for the in installer to start. And there you go, it's about to start. You can see it reached out to my gateway 192.168.1.1 and received an IP address of 144. So 192.168.1.144 will be the IP address of my Proxmox system or the one that we are installing right here. So I agree to the terms and conditions. Here is where we create our ZFS rate mirror. So if I hit this drop down right here, I should see three disks and I do see three disks, two of the same size for ZFS, RAID 1 mirror, and the next one will be a disk I just pass through to my Proxmox and I create, usually the way I do it, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with it later. I think I'm getting ahead of myself here. So let's start from here first. Let's hit the options and we'll make some configuration changes. In the past, I've used EXT. Majority of the time, I, I think for almost 14 years, I've used EXT4. Now, this version of my upgrade, I went with ZFS RAID 1 and that's what we're gonna do today. So let's select ZFS RAID 1 and it presents us with all three drives that I made available available to this system obviously here i don't want i don't want hard disk number two because that is something that we will use later on we're only going to use the two similar sized disks for the zfs raid one mirror so if one goes bad the other one will bail us out when the other one goes bad obviously you have redundancy there and when one does go out keep in mind that you might have to go into the bios to change the boot order or things like that so if your system doesn't boot, don't freak out. There's, you have to make some changes in the BIOS for, for the second hard drive to help you with the boot. So for now, we have selected the two disks right there. We don't really need to mess with any of the advanced settings right here. Let's select this and hit OK. We're done. So at this point, we're not really using the third disk that I just passed through. We will use the disk from Proxmox GUI once Proxmox is ready. So here I am in Switzerland. So here I do not want Swiss German keyboard. I would prefer US English. And there you go. So let's type in some passwords. So I'm just going to type in something really simple right now. I would really like to have a.com domain name, but I know that's not possible. So let's, let's, I can keep, I can dream. So FQDN, everything can be the same uh, here. We don't really need to make any changes. And as I pointed out before, uh, the IP address of the system is going to be 192.168.1.144. Let's remember that. So let's hit next. Here's the summary and we will boot right after. So when you do this, on a bare bone system, you will essentially go through the same windows. If for whatever reason the graphical installation fails, don't hesitate to use the terminal UI. It still works great and I did not have any issues when I um, when I installed my previous system. Now I will tell you that the kernel, the Linux kernel in Debian or Proxmox or Ubuntu or any Linux distribution for that matter would be few versions all depending on what distribution you use, what version you use and this may cause issues. This is why when I set up Proxmox on my top 10 V700, I could not use the graphical UI because the kernel that was with Proxmox 7 at that time did not support the newest hardware that were present in my top 10 V700 system. So in that case, the graphical installer failed and I had to use the terminal UI to finish the installation. But again, essentially the steps should be very, very similar. Now, after I installed Proxmox, I was able to install the newest kernel, which then made all the hardware available for me on Proxmox. If you're still with me on this video, I'm sure there are at least some parts of the video that you really like. In addition, if you have liked the videos that I have put out so far on my channel, please consider subscribing to one of the many membership options that I have on my website. No obligation, as I've said many times before, but if you do so, it would really help me and motivate me to do more and more. Okay, back to the video. Okay, the installation just finished, so we are ready to access the web interface for Proxmox. The system is going to reboot now, so let's wait for the system to reboot and just give it a few seconds right there. So hit enter for it to boot, and I'm gonna close out all these tabs that I do not need anymore, and we're gonna go to HTTPS, then 192.168.1.144 if you remember and the port number is 
8006 so let's let's just quickly check okay it's done so i'm gonna enter the web interface right there don't worry about the insecure warning this is normal because we are using a self-signed certificate if you do not know what that means if you hit that section or the the red stop sign right there and go in and look at your certificate it's going to be a certificate that was issued locally and this is not officially recognized by the, the browser this is why you see that warning so let's continue we are going to go to the and the username by default is root and i will type in the password i selected so you will see this warning it's because we are using the free edition it, the pop-up is going to be there now there are ways to disable this pop-up and there are scripts that can do it for you i'm not going to show that in this video so proxmox is awesome application and i believe in supporting proxmox so if you guys are annoyed by this pop-up feel free to go ahead and disable it i'm gonna just let it be for now so let's keep moving so i'm gonna close this okay so i'm close that pop-up right there so here we are in my proxmox environment you can see that i have the local disk which is a zfs raid one mirror with about 32 or a little less than 32 gigabytes right there. So it was really that simple to install Proxmox and get started. I promised that I would show you a few more things before I left for today and that's what we're gonna focus on. If you remember, I added a third disk which was going to be my storage disk and let's see how to add that right now. For storage purposes, I usually like to just add a disk as a directory. So if we click on the node right there, and head over down to the disks section you're going to see all the disks that are in here the disk one and disk two are raid mirrors and they are exactly the same you can see the partitions are exactly the same then there is a third disk that is not used right now so we're going to use that we're going to create a new directory so create a directory it automatically picks up the unused disk and i'm going to just use ext for for this one now and i will call this i ssd for you know you can call it whatever so and let's leave this box checked in so it shows up on, on the left side as a storage so let's create that right now and and that's done so on the left you see there is a new storage that's called ssd which is what we called it so in just a few seconds it should be ready now it's ready and the total size is about 67 gigabytes which is the size of the disk that we created so if we go in here to the node and the, and the directory and you can see again where this disk is mounted so mn slash mnt slash pve slash ssd so if i go to the shell and go to slash m and d pve i should see ss ls i should see the ssd mount point right there so anything that goes into this disk should be available from here so we added the disk now three things before i leave today the first one always always up update your your proxmox installation as soon as you install it but unfortunately updates are not going to be available right now because if you go to repository so i'm in node and repositories right here you see that proxmox by default enables the enterprise repository and this is not going to let us update our environment so let's first disable the enterprise ones there are two right here so let's disable this one and let's also disable this one and we're going to add the community repository which is free and let's if we scroll down here the no subscription option is the community repository we did that we're also going to add one for Ceph, so let's scroll down. Ceph, no subscription right there. So we added the two repositories right now. Now, if if we go to updates, we're gonna and refresh it. We're gonna be able to see some packages that need refreshing. For example, right here, you see it's accessing different things and trying to pull up the latest packages that are available for upgrade. This step won't even happen if you had the enterprise repository enabled by default so 
we already did that here you can see that there are a few packages that are ready to be upgraded so upgrading proxmox using the web interface is one of the safest ways to do it if you're coming from the linux world and have used sudo apt upgrade and sudo apt dist upgrade and sudo apt full upgrade all of these things there are many variations of it and you can easily get confused you can easily do the wrong thing so my recommendation is to always update proxmox from the web interface, refresh and upgrade all the packages that are available for upgrade. So let's hit upgrade right now and let's finish the process. Okay, the upgrade is done. I said three things. First, we disabled the enterprise repository and enabled the community or the no subscription repository. Second, we upgraded Proxmox. And third, the last one that I want to show you, and it's one of the most critical things that you should be doing, is to enable multi-factor authentication. How do we do that? Right here, I'm logged in as root right now. So if I go head over to the right side top corner right there and hit the top down, you are going to see TFA. So hit the TFA and you it should take you to the two-factor authentication section of the data center and right at the top you have many different options if you have a hardware key you can do that you can do multiple different things at the very least turn on the one-time passcode option it should show you a qr code right there so we are going to scan the qr code on my app right here and let's finish the process right in front of your eyes so I scanned it in right there and saved it. Now, now let me type in the code 514295 and we need to also provide a description. So I'm just gonna say root user and add it. Now we are done. So let's test it out. So I'm gonna log out right there and I'm gonna log back in as root, root. And there you go. I am being asked for my multi-factor authentication path one-time passcode so one eight and i am in so there you go it's not really difficult to install proxmox as you saw i strongly recommend zfs raid one mirror if you have the the slots for duplicated disk as well as enough ram to support zfs i also showed you three things you absolutely need to do which is to disable the enterprise repository if you're not going to subscribe to the enterprise plan enable the no subscription repository update your proxmox and finally enable multi-factor authentication i hope this video showed you how i install proxmox on my server and helps you also figure out what you want to do with the mini pc or the server that you have available for installing proxmox if you really like this video please do not hesitate to hit that like button it really motivates me to keep going also subscribe to my channel otherwise this is the end of the video i hope this was useful for you guys i will see you in my next video go geek army